So, are there any questions in the audience? We are so young. Good for you. Sorry, sorry for that. <laughs> Better question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, why would you like to explain a little more why? Uh, I don't know. I don't know her name. Clara, about the daughter of. Uh, no? uh, yes. Lynn, the second generation. Okay. Hannah, why do you? Um, what do you call it? Why do you feel that she was so angry? I mean, she seemed to be excessively angry. And I wasn't sure where that all came from. Could you explain a little? I know you tried to explain some, but yeah, maybe sure. there's something that. Well, there's, there's so many layers, right? I mean, on one hand, there's like the basic contact to a mother who left her alone with the socialism and not being there as a mother. There's this conflict, then the basic conflict that she already lost a son to Israel, to a religion. We don't know what happened to him. And then her daughter, the only thing she got. The only thing that's left uh, is, is moving out. So that's basically where we start. And she felt her mother was sort of accusing her in some way. Or maybe the mother was accusing her because she felt accused. Yeah, that's like a normal mother daughter relationship, I guess. <laughs> 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 Am I wrong? <laughs> One more question about that. How common do you feel that the grandmother, her point of view, how common is that? Um, or is it just more specific to her? Or does that represent a certain generation that you experience? It does. Uh, not from my experience, because I'm from Russia, but in uh, the former GDR, this story is totally researched. It's based on uh, Linia Dato, who's like a natural character. She, I think last year was her would be at 100 or Could you please speak up? Uh, yeah, pardon? I can't hear. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, uh, I researched a lot about the GDR and the Jews in Germany, and especially GDR because that was this special case of so-called anti-fascist anti state. And it is very representative of what was going on there. In the West, it was still different. And I would say there was more of assimilation going on. But all the Jews came to the GDR to create this new state, this anti-fascist, you know, ground, new, new, new thinking of a human being, and of course everything went horribly wrong. And there, most of them were in the party, most <coughs> of the Stasi, uh, spying on people. And when this whole thing uh, broke down, there was still this conf uh, confusing moment of we survived the Holocaust, so what can we do about? It's like, is there no way of dealing with this world, with this country, with this nation? Because they were also Germans, you know. So this is very representative, a state where you, you don't have like the right or the wrong, you don't have a solution for anything. It's just like burned ground. You've written so beautifully and, and there are so many layers. I'm curious, do you write in English or in German? <laughs> In German. <laughs> and then it's translated. Yeah. But it's, it's magnificent. Yeah, in the back. What is the country of origin of the jokes? Very <laughs> 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 funny. Um, you know, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, it's like uh, it's yeah, far away from where, you know? Um, uh, yeah, well, the Jewish jokes, very old Jewish jokes. I heard them in Russia, I grew up with them. With all of them. And we had like a very uh, magnificent moment yesterday yeah. when we had our <laughs> dinner, and the guy was like, oh, I want to tell this joke as an opening, and he started to tell the joke. He just told you, like, you know, with like, the mothers, the three mothers. And I was like, I can't believe you're telling this joke right now. He's like, anything wrong with this joke? And I was like, no, but this is the joke I told at my opening in Berlin. <laughs> Two Jews from two other corners of the world. <laughs> That's where the jokes are from. <laughs> but they're very typically, I would say, Ashkenazi jokes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not too many Moroccan Jews with this. And it, like, everybody, you, you guys should tell the jokes too. Yeah. <laughs> We'd like to hear them if you have them. <laughs> we get more of them. <laughs> yeah. Just a simple question. When is your play going to be published? 
so that we critics can take it apart. <laughs> uh, Hopefully mean, enjoy it as well. <laughs> you mean published here? Or in German. Well, it's already published. Okay. Uh, this play is already staged in a bunch of countries, and uh, it's published already. There's a book in German. You could buy it. And let me say, I really enjoyed it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Right yeah. uh, is the uh, in the German version? Is there a part in Yiddish, and if so, who's speaking Yiddish? Well, there are always parts. Um, of course, Lynn, Lynn just says a little piece of Yiddish, and also Rachel is trying to to you know to learn it from her. She's reading this uh, dictionary of Jewish. Yeah. Like this is very funny because Germans, as Yiddish and German, they're so similar, as you know. The Germans. Normally, think that Yiddish comes from German. What, which they, what they don't know is that there are words from Yiddish which came over like to the German language. Mm -hmm. So there, and there is a dictionary of these words in German which actually come from the Jewish tradition. And this is the dictionary uh, Rachel is reading, and uh, um, Lynn is responding to it. And this is also um, I have this dictionary at home, and it was kind of like an invention for me because I, I didn't know that too. So that. That's kind of like this part of it. And they're singing in Yiddish, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, um, you have to know that it's based on uh, the story of Lily Agati. And she, all of her songs she performed, they were in Yiddish. And I, I like to have that like in the staging that you, you really can hear the songs. Yeah. Did you always have in mind that the grandmother to be the one who took, who took the letters of was that something you changed your mind? The question was about whether it was uh, originally always the grandmother taking the letters. Um, Once a Stasi, always a Stasi. <laughs> <laughs> chose not to mention any of the fathers. Yeah, that was a clear decision. <laughs> uh, and oh, why? Oh, why? <laughs> 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 You're a brother. <laughs> I, I, I thought it might have been somebody's earlier question about anger, and I thought it might have been something that contributed to the 
to the uh, to <coughs> Maureen's anger. Oh no, uh, I see. I see a point. But no, for me, it's um, I, I don't know about American theater, but I mean, like I, I go very often, like in Berlin and all over the place. I, I watch a lot of. German theater, and there's always the same picture of women. They're weak, they're sexualized, they're, you know, like beautiful, uh, no shoes, uh, very nice voice. <laughs> um, and they don't that, wear shoes in German theater? Women don't wear shoes. Like, it's, it's kind of like, well, if they wear shoes, they're more like a torture weapon than <laughs> like real shoes. <laughs> Well, I mean, of course, I'm generalizing and exaggerating, but you see my point yes. of like this image of women. I cannot really connect with that. So I was wondering where are all the strong characters on stage. We had that like in Asian plays. Look at them, like Clytemnestra or I don't know Iphigenia. All of them, they were great women. So where are they? And then I was doing research on uh, German uh, romance, like this period in theater. Good. Uh, uh, Schiller, a lot of guys. Kleist. Uh, they. They had two options for women. They're a mother or a lover. Okay. And the mother doesn't speak and the lover has to love or die. <laughs> and the father tells you if you will survive or not. This is my joke about two worms and the father tells you continue eating this shit. Uh, so this is kind of like my, my dealing with the German tradition of theater. And I was, I was very angry about like colleagues of mine in my age because I was thinking, okay, this is like what it was. I accept that. But now we're living in different times, so where are all the strong women on stage? And I thought somebody has to start. Hmm. But <laughs> this is not a devil's advocacy that I would care to, to take on for myself here. But by having a son in absentia, there's a male figure and yeah. a conundrum for all of them, of course. Yeah. So. Why would you pick the son of that generation to have as a male figure and none others? I thought, well, uh, just in terms of structure, absolutely. You know, because yeah. clearly there are six people in this care in this play: a father, to a father, a, a husband to the two older women, and the brother to the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> Just talking structurally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that in existence, those people have to have existed. First of all, so I, we, yeah, I thought it's interesting that the, we're just talking about men, but they're not on stage because normally it's the other way around. Right. And uh, secondly, I was thinking about that point a lot. Shouldn't it be like a twin sister, for example? Then, according to all the Jewish jokes, I thought, why? <laughs> I mean, like, um, that's what we're accusing our moms a lot. Like, no, you don't love me, you love the other one. And there's also this competition going on between like the daughter and the son and uh, I, w I was discussing that uh, with a friend who told me well there is like a certain question I have to ask if you're talking about sexism it's uh, is there a scene in the play in a movie in a piece of art where women talking about something which is between them besides a man <laughs> and I think this play does it so I thought it's okay to have one man to talk <laughs> uh, there's also another man, sort of, you know, Clements, and I wonder. Uh, is he supposed to be a real German, or is it more like an English name, or you know? Oh, it's a very German name. My first boyfriend's name. Yeah. <laughs> She could tell me more, 
and uh, she said like also my my um, family in law is also from this woman here, and so we talked a lot about that. And um, I realized from the point of uh, everything was okay for Jews there. We discovered that there, there were ghettos, there were programs, there were like you know firing people and stuff. So now when this play came out. The West is just like, you know, applauding and it's just great. We always knew that the GDR just sucked. Um, <laughs> but um, I think it's, it's just amazing what comes out of people because it's not that long time ago, you know? And that's the first time we have the chance to talk about it. So, of course, first reaction is no, but it, it comes out of people and there, there's a great response to it. And I think people are very thankful that they, they are reminded of minorities. I mean, the Jews were not the only minority. And we were not the only minority who was like suffering. So it's just like <coughs> the first steps we're taking. I have two questions. Are any of these marvelous actors going to perform in any of the other of your other plays? <coughs> oh, this. You mean this? Well, we're doing the show again uh, no, tomorrow no, in Atlanta. No, oh, no, in other shows. No, um, yeah, so Maureen was just actually, you know, it's sort of an odd. I was writing an invitation to all the people who uh, have worked with German stage, with Israeli stage, and Swiss stage, and suddenly I got 50, 53 names. It's like, oh my god, we were 53 actors. Um, and, you know, Becky has been in two shows uh, with Israeli stage, and Bobby was in our last German stage play, and Maureen was just in our season premiere with Israeli stage, in which we're touring now. So. I have worked with them before, and they're here again. I love them. So. Yes, this is so great. You're really, you're so great. Yeah.
What are what other things are you conscious about when you're writing? What elements in a play that you try to include? You mean like generally? <laughs> in your in your writing. Yes. Well. Best case, I'm not conscious at all. <laughs> I'm just writing. You know, I don't know if you write, but there are two ways of writing. The one thing is you have a political agenda, and the other thing is, oh, I wrote it when I don't remember that. <laughs> and the, the second one is better. Uh, but I mean, it, it always. I mean, I'm always driven by a certain. I, I'd have to say, even if it sounds awkward, political events. Um, and I try not to be very didactic, you know, because I also have this thing in the play where I speak everything like very clearly, okay, here's the year, here's what happened. And I think it's it's not really for a stage, it's for a newspaper. So I kind of like, you know, try to do this film. But normally I'm kind of like, there's, you know who Guido Westover is? The for, uh, former foreign minister of Germany, he's, he, he's like, he was, um, let's say, a little xenophobic. Um, and he said, he said in one of the interview, very offensive to a British journalist because he doesn't speak English. Like, you have to speak German here, this is German here. And I was so angry that instead of destroying my computer, I, I responded with a play. Um, to it. So this is how I normally write. I'm so angry at something. <laughs> <laughs> Although he speaks very good English. He does. Uh, well, he does. well, we can argue about that. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering, uh, when you normally write a play, is it more or less in the final form that it's going to be produced, or do you, have, when you're working with the actors, maybe in rehearsal, do some of them make comments which might influence you to change something? Uh, I love to talk with the actors about what I write. I mean, it's just, I mean, this, this is this procedure, right? And I, I did both. I, I had this, okay, I'm putting myself up, but this is the play, go for it. And I had like, okay, I have a draft of something, let's try it together and then develop it to a play. And uh, I have to say, before I really, finish a play, I always read it loud with the actors and I need their opinion desperately and I think this is a productive way for me. Just uh, before we go into the reception room, I wanted to say that tonight we're celebrating actually another artist. Uh, in the back room there are wonderful paintings by Alexandra Rosenbach, who is a real jewel in Boston, a wonderful painter, of a great friend. Um, and she also comes from a Jewish uh, Russian, former Soviet Union uh, background, so you can get to see her work as well tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank Mariana for coming.